The autumn wind is a league holding the treasures ye may seek. Have some fun and play along, whether for a day or for a week. Seek advice from a sage or battle straight up. Square off in a cage or joust without a cup. It's a FanDuel. Is it your favorite you take or make the logical play? Will your foe stand before you and quiver and quake as you will be crowned prince for a day? The autumn wind may be a casual player, fan-dueling just to talk trash. But there will be those that will play that will be able to say, I've got my hands on some cold, hard cash. Hello and welcome to the Box Horse Fan Duel Draft Day. I'm Brock here in Los Angeles from our very own Red Zone set, joined by the Danits in New York. Of course, they're in the Fantasy Zone lounge ready for week seven. Now, McLovin has gotten into a groove so much so that he spent most of the day taking shots at actor Josh Demel, and it paid off. He called in and you got him to sign up for a mono e mono challenge on Fan Duel. Have you guys cleared the air yet? Are you besties now? Apparently, after the segment, Josh got on with two days. Uh, up at the Connecticut Man Cave and was like, I'm gonna take McLovin down. So apparently he's really into it. He That's said he's great. gonna kick your, you yeah. know what? This is a little scary, but he's got like this, he's got purple on the mind. He's all about the Vikings. Every yeah. time he's on with Dan, it's like, oh, isn't Adrian Peterson great? Isn't Bridgewater great? That's gonna kill him. You can't, you gotta put your allegiances to the side. Any concern that, you know, he's a pretty big dude. I think he played football, Minot State. No. No. And he said he might come in studio next month. And you said you're gonna dumb it down for him. No. <laughs> I have no concern about that pretty boy. <laughs> and if he's watching now, which I'm sure he is. <laughs> yeah, I'm just concerned Bring about Fritzy grabbing the bust in front of him. That might be awkward. All right, well, let's take a look it. at our official standings <laughs> from week six. The day finally came for Paul Paps, who took the top spot in the man cave, followed by Pearl. DP got the Todd Fritz Middle of the Road Award, while Fritzy and Seton uh, brought <laughs> up the rear. Polly, you did no research and just listened to everyone pick their lineups, uh, and that built your roster. Is it safe to say that you'll stick with this tactic since it works so well? Absolutely not. Uh, my tactic this week was similar. I, I picked my team in uh, under two minutes, probably under, maybe under 90 seconds. I went fast and loose to the point where I had to check my team because I didn't remember any of the guys that I picked. It's like morning. Malcolm Gladwell blink. You know, there's scientific studies that you're first team does he play? Malcolm plays for who? Malcolm Gladwell. He plays, a, he was a Jet, I right? Think, yeah, yeah, he was a tight end. In the Him, a Abdul safety? Salam, Malcolm Gladwell at no. Richard, Richard But Kester. my point is scientific study shows that your first instinct is much smarter than after you read it. So Paulie might have some scientific background for his team this week. Or awesome. I'm just lazy. Also or known as Occam's Razor. With an action-packed week six in the books, let's look back at the players who helped winners win and losers lose. Mm. Starting with the wing eater himself and his finger licking good picket. <laughs> you know, they use new uh, video of me eating wings every week. That's fresh video from Monday, isn't it, Seton? I believe so. Because uh, Monday's my big wing day. Let's get right to it. Matthew Stafford, who is usually a fantasy football favorite because, whoa, alliteration, is he always puts up numbers whether they win or lose. Now, he started off really slow in September, October. 405 yards, four touchdowns, 37 rushing yards. That's like doubles his career total of 37 rushing yards, yeah. probably. Then you go to DeAndre Hopkins. Now, he's interesting because he's amongst the best wide receivers in the game without a great quarterback. He's being targeted so much by Hoyer that I think he's a sure thing. I think, though, he moved up to the top of the wide yeah. receiver's cost. Yes. So now you've got to pay for DeAndre Hopkins. Hopkins. If you got him in September or October, you probably got him on the cheap. Now he's full price. Phillip Rivers, another stat guy, 503 yards, two touchdowns. That's a classic Phillip Rivers loss. Yes. Right. But it works for us, if you know what yeah, I mean. So yeah. Phillip Rivers, is, these three guys are not uh, cheap, but they're <laughs> kind of sure things. Over to Fritzy for the bust of the week. Speaking of Josh Dumel, yeah. <laughs> I should have gone with Eddie Lacy. You only gave me three points uh, in the uh, in the running back spot. But uh, one guy who got you all hot and bothered from a fantasy standpoint to begin the season was Antonio Brown. But since Big Ben went down, so has his production. Last week, only three catches, just 24 yards. Not getting it done, Antonio Brown. That was surprising. Couldn't get into a groove at all on Sunday. No touchdowns. Again, three receptions for 24 so yards. He, so he had three receptions for 24 yards? Three catches, 24 yards. He had just under four fantasy points. 
3.9 to be exact. Uh, things were looking good for Melvin Gordon early on with the Chargers, but Sunday a rough one against the Packers, only 29 rushing yards, fumbled twice, losing one yes. of those two fumbles, a grand total of 0 0.9 fantasy points. If you can't get at least one full point, there's definitely a, yeah. something wrong. Not voluptuous picks. Antonio Brown, <laughs> Melvin Gordon, not, uh, not getting it done. And I will pass it over to Seton to find out which rock star broke through in week six. Man, I think everybody pretty much thought Chris Ivory of the Jets was going to have a monster day, but I don't think anybody saw that big of a game coming from him. 146 yards and a touchdown. He even got another 50 yards at the passing game. Uh, I, it's pretty much everybody taking him this week. And I week. think we all, three of us picked him last week on our team, so we all scored big with him, I yeah. think. Yeah, he got you a whole bunch of points. I think 27 points, something like that. He was awesome. Um, and then coming up this week against the Patriots, who are terrible against the run, I would say he's probably another sure thing. Um, but I'm not really sure. I'll tell you what, though. Uh, Andrew, you have a uh, system-breaking quarterback for us? I do. Okay, uh, my system-breaking quarterback, let's call him Andy Luck today oh. instead of Andrew. Maybe Anderson break some Luck. of his bad luck. Now, this is a classic case of fantasy football where you had decent numbers, big numbers, despite a loss. You know, he rallied some of these. He started throwing like crazy in the second half, put up a big day against the Patriots, and reports are uh, today that his shoulder's looking better. That's a guy, I don't know how good the Colts are, I know they play the Saints this week, but that's a guy in a loss who's probably going to put up more numbers than in a win. That's what I call system breaking. <laughs> oh, oh, it's, oh, a win. it's a win. All right, solid breakdown there from the guys. I don't think I could have put it any better myself. Rest assured I couldn't. My fantasy record would reflect that. Don't go away. We will reveal the Danettes lineups for week seven. And remember, in every fantasy truck draft, the Ram 1500 Eco Diesel is the number one and only pick. This bad boy can climb a hill, haul a trailer, and is good for at least 350 yards and four touchdowns every Sunday. Come on. Get more facts at RamTrucks.com. Guts, glory, Ram. Welcome back to Boxer's FanDuel Draft Day. It is time to get ready for week seven. But first, let's reveal the Danettes challenge for this week. McLovin, break it down. This week, we have to pick a player who is on hard knocks. Now, a lot of teams are on Hard Knocks, but if your player was not on that team when the Hard Knocks was in camp, last year it was the Texans, the year before that it was Atlanta, you got a Cincinnati, who unfortunately is on a bye, uh, you got another Cincinnati team, you got an old Dallas team. So you have a lot of choices, a lot of really good players on this list. All right, well, allow me to throw one in the mix, if you will. How about you select a player who's been an in-studio guest on the Dan Patrick Show? You can choose from Forte, Cam Newton, Drew Brees, just to name a few. Fritzy, uh, how do you feel about something like that? I like that, especially uh, Drew Brees. He's uh, one of my favorites, and uh, if we want to do that as a future challenge, I would have no problem starting uh, Mr. Brees. All right, well, let's see if there are any former in-studio guests on his list. Uh, Seton, give us your lineup, please. All right, uh, quarterback, I have Carson Palmer. I think he's going to torch the Ravens. Uh, mm -hmm. I've got Devontae Freeman, uh, who seems to be a sure thing. I went with uh, Chris Ivory because I overreact to everything. Mm -hmm. I took Sir Lawrence Fitzgerald mm. again for the uh, torching <laughs> of the Ravens. Uh, I panicked at a moment and took Tavon Austin because I was like, oh, I know him. I'll take him. Uh, but he's questionable, so that might change. Uh, again, another overreaction. I took Bartavis Bryant. Uh, I have Jason Witten. I have some fella named Travis Coons at kicker. Oh, he loved Coons. Uh, <laughs> and the... Uh, for my defense, I have the Viking. All right, uh, Carson Palmer and Larry Gerald, great picks. Hey. Seton, you went heavy on the Pats last week and finished last, and you have zero Patriots uh, this week. Did that last place for, uh, finish turn you off from taking the Pats, or are you just uh, scared of that Jets D? Uh, yeah, I didn't. I don't really like the matchup there, uh, so I decided to go away from the Patriots a little bit. Uh, I think the Patriots and the Jets are a little too evenly matched. So, uh, and, I, and I could easily take Patriots every week. Uh, I wouldn't mind that, but the, not this week. All right. Well, on to the man who loves coming in second, Todd Fritz. Uh, who you got in your team this week? <laughs> 
All right, I was trying to accomplish two things. Well, one thing I always try to accomplish, I like to mix things up to have some one o'clock games, some four o'clock games. Smart. And, you know, maybe a Sunday night and a Monday night. So this way, uh, you know, you got some things to look forward to into the uh, into the later portion mm. of the day. But the other thing I wanted to try this week was having someone from uh, nine, for the nine positions, nine different games. So I was able to accomplish that, but seven of the nine games are at one o'clock. So I'm either going to be in really good shape or in really bad shape before the... Uh, four o'clock game is going to do it. Ryan Tannehill is going to be my quarterback to uh, take care of the uh, hard knocks uh, challenge commitment. Todd Gurley and uh, LeGarrette Blunt. Don't know uh, how that's going to pan out, but those are uh, going to be my running backs. Ty Hilton, Pierre Garçon, Odell Beckham Jr. are my three wide receivers. Going with Antonio Gates at tight end. Mm. And uh, Matt Bryant is going to kick for me for the Falcons at Tennessee. Going with the Steelers defense at Arrowhead. And again, seven of these are one o'clock games, and all nine of these are nine different games. And I'm curious to see how that plays out. Mm. Now, Fritzy, I know you're pigeonholed by the challenge, but aren't you taking a big risk on Ryan Tannehill, who has been playing well lately? Uh, I mean, let me ask you this. Is his wife really that hot? His wife is very attractive. She's uh, she's reason enough to uh, start Ryan at least uh, one week throughout the uh, FanDuel season. They're also uh, hosting Houston as long as they can keep J.J. Watt, uh, you know, somewhere away from uh, breaking Tannehill's bones. I'm not that uh, confident in the in the Texans. Mm -hmm. I think Ryan's going to uh, do well. I see him getting at least two touchdowns and uh, putting up maybe 250 yards or so. Nice solid day. Nothing too great. Yeah. Okay. Be solid right. day. <laughs> okay. We've got two lineups all set. And remember. Uh, if you want to play one week fantasy football against Dan and the Danettes, just go to fanduel.com slash Patrick and enter the promo code Patrick for a 100% deposit match up to $200 on new accounts. $5 to enter and winners get instant cash as soon as contest ends. That's fanduel.com slash Patrick. Fanduel, the leader in one day fantasy sports. Uh, stick around, we got the smart guy and the man who cheated off him uh, presenting their lineups for week seven. Uh, we're back here on the box scores FanDuel Draft Day. McLovin made history today by luring actor Josh Demel into the world of FanDuel by taking shots at him all day. Are there any other celebrities out there that you're going to uh, start taking shots at to try to get them to stand up, uh, sign up for the Danduel uh, League? Oh, yeah, there are all sorts of pretty boys out there. Ryan Gosling, listen, I'll come after you, Channing Tatum. You name the Hollywood heartthrob, I will take him on in fantasy. That sounds really weird when you put it <laughs> that, that sentence together. <laughs> Hollywood heartthrobs, you'll take them on in fantasy. Oh, we'll just sit on that one for a half second. All right, okay, McLovin, let's have it. Uh, you may present your lineup to the good folks of Dan Nation. Okay, this is what I call the overreact to last week lineup. So anyone who killed it last week is on my team. Let's start with Philip Rivers, 500 yards. Hey, he got to, he's got Oakland this week. Maybe he'll throw for more quarterback. Running back, like Seaton, uh, Devontae Freeman to fulfill my hard knocks. Uh, then, actually, I looked at Chris Ivory, but went with Todd Gurley. Because Todd oh, Gurley, yeah. I know a lot of people have Todd Gurley. Like, if Todd Gurley runs for 200 yards, like, I feel he has in him, and I don't have him, and we're really mad. <laughs> that doesn't mean he'll do it. <laughs> then, receiver, I put Larry Fitzgerald in every week since week two, so I put him there. And then, Mr. John Brown from Arizona, who had almost 200 yards last That's week. A good one. So, even though Seton has Carson Palmer at quarterback, I'm just as invested in the uh, <coughs> Cardinals offense. And then, like Seton, I have Martavis Bryant. Huge week for the Steelers. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> you never bet against a guy named Martavis. That's rule number one. <laughs> then tight end, I borrowed from Todd Fritz with Antonio Gates, Why not? who I've had three weeks in a row. Hopefully, they'll keep producing. Kicker Josh Brown for the Giants. And then I went with the cheapo defense, once again, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers versus the Redskins. All right, you went with Devontae Freeman to satisfy the, uh, the um, challenge, but who was your yeah. second choice in that uh, category? Well, oh, there are a lot of guys I like. I definitely liked Ivory, who did amazing for me last week. Um, I, I looked hard at, um, there was a guy at 7,200 that I flirted with. Who was at 7,200? Anyone remember the price range? For running oh, back? Oh, yeah, for running back. Maybe Isaiah Crowell. I don't know, I, but I came down, it, for me, it was between Ivory and uh, Todd Gurley. I was yeah, I looked at Ivory. Large. Basically, I flip-flop. I did several yeah. iterations, but you know, it comes down to the $100, and Ivory just, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Gurley just fit perfectly. How close do you guys come every week to going with AP? I'm waiting for that one breakout week where he goes. I've never had him last week. He, uh, last week, and he, he screwed me over. So you're done with He's him? Done, I'm done <laughs> with him. All right, well, on to the man who finished on top last week. Let's see if he can do it again. Pauly, your week seven lineup, please. 
Give me a minute to get used to this. I've never been part of the winner segment before. <laughs> um, Rivers, I went with Phil Rivers, my quarterback. Oh, Again, great. a guy who... What? I have Rivers, too. All right. I have the same team as all you guys. <laughs> uh, I went with Todd Gurley at running back because yeah. I think he's going to... He had a week off. He'll be fully healthy, finally. Doug Martin, who no longer wants to be the muscle hamster. He wants to be the duggernaut, which I like. Uh, Amari Cooper, I think he's going to... Yeah. I don't think he's going to be a home run, but I think he's going to get, like, 15 points. Antonio Brown, Antonio Brown had a bad week. Antonio Brown doesn't have a lot of bad weeks in a row, so I'm betting big on him to have a huge week. And if, uh, what's his name, Roethlisberger gets back, or Landry Jones, we're in better shape. Uh, Golden Tate, again, nice player, not a home run here. Jason Witten, hard knocks a long, long time ago. But he was on it. He's another guy who's going to get you like 12 easy. That's kind of what he does. I have no recollection of my defense or special teams, but I'm sure they're good people. <laughs> All right, Paulie, you got both Antonio Brown and Jason Witten in there. Uh, are you nervous taking two pass catches from teams that could start third-string quarterbacks, or do you have inside information that indicates at least Big Ben will return this week? Well, yeah, you're right that it, you, you can't see their quarterbacks having a 350-yard, five-touchdown pass day. That being said, if I'm like a third-string quarterback, I'm going to go all day to Antonio Brown, the yeah. my safest bet. Right. If I'm uh, Brandon Whedon, whoever is the schlub back Castle. there. Castle. Yeah. Castle. I'm going to go to Jason Witten all day, especially yeah. if Des Bryant is Absolutely. maybe back or not back at all. So uh, those guys always get targets, I think. All right, we'll see if you can repeat the top spot. Don't go away. The boss's lineup is all that's left. We'll see who he's got in week seven. But first, we're going to take a break and remind you that the Ram Heavy Duty, with its best in class uh, towing torque and horsepower, doesn't need one. Get more facts at ramtrucks.com. Guts. Glory Ram. Uh, we are closing up shop here on the Box Scores FanDuel Draft Day. And don't forget you, that's right, you, can also take on Dan and the Danettes in weekly fantasy football. Just go to FanDuel.com slash Patrick and enter the promo code Patrick for a 100% deposit match up to $200 on new accounts, $5 to enter, and winners get instant cash as soon as contest ends. Now, a few of you guys have won a, a little money playing FanDuel this year, but Fritzy, if you had to take your winnings and buy a Danette a gift, who would you get a little a special something for in the man cave, aside from the boss? Hmm. I would probably get something for McLovin, only because he has to put up with me uh, every day and being in closest proximity to me. I'm not sure exactly what that would be, but uh, maybe something Philadelphia-related, maybe one of those cheap uh, picture frame Mike Schmidt things that or a, a desk. Few, few Christmases ago that I gave for all the guys <laughs> that they me of making the, uh, pictures. And so uh, something along those and lines. for us. Uh, <laughs> I think that would be, uh, be nice. Maybe a little, maybe a 76er keychain or. A, maybe you could buy me a foot-long subway that you I measured could. Yeah, we could measure with adult entertainment stuff. Yeah, they're measuring uh, so, yeah, those that's things. Probably the most bizarre thing he's ever said. All right, I'm sure <laughs> if he could, uh, Dan would buy all of you guys gifts with his FanDuel uh, winnings. But, <laughs> but for now, no, let's just would see what his lineup looks like for this week. All right, uh, this week in the Listener's League, you have to have somebody who has been featured on Hard Knocks down through the years. So I'm taking Matt Ryan as my quarterback. I probably could have taken Devontae Freeman, but um, I forgot. Frank Gore, I got uh, Doug Martin, uh, Calvin Johnson, Amari Cooper. Uh, Jason Witten's also on the roster, Sebastian Janikowski. Panthers defense will be facing the Eagles Sunday night on NBC. So that's it. I mean, people want to know how I create the magic, and that's how I create the magic. It's just that simple. I make it look a little too easy. Well, actually, Dan, is, I, have, I have players on all three of these guys' teams. Dan and I differ a little bit. So that means I can't finish too far ahead or behind any of you, <laughs> but Dan is either going to be the big winner or the big loser in the group. Because the three, I think the four of us are going to be neck and neck. It's going to come down to our kicker. You heard that? Dan is the oddball, All right. as usual. <laughs> hey, Seton, you spent your last, uh, you spent last Saturday in South Bend with Dan and his son. Did you hear them talk fantasy strategy at any point during the trip? <laughs> you know, I can't say that I did, um, but they may have had like a, a private conversation elsewhere. Uh, although his, his son that trip uh, was doing a little bit of napping. Yeah. Uh, so and that, throwing up in the jet and throwing up <laughs> in the jet. Uh, so <laughs> I think Dan had other things on his mind. Yeah. yeah all right. Uh, <laughs> he told him to draft Ralph. <laughs> <laughs> Got this one in the bag. All right, Paulie, real quick. Tell us which Danette comes out on top after week seven. I, I agree with McLovin. I think it's going to be right there together. I'm going to go Seton O'Connor. I think it's his turn in the rotation. 
All right, well, it's time for me to pick which Danette I think is going to come out on top. And I'm going with McLovin. He's been hovering around second the last two weeks. It's time for uh, to reclaim your place on the uh, Game of Thrones, as it were, sir. So congratulations to you in advance. Good call, Brock. All right, Good Fritzy, call. tell us who's on the Dan Patrick Show tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow is a work in progress. We may hear from uh, Al Leiter on his 50th birthday, former Mets and Blue Jays pitcher, among other teams. But uh, we'll have to get back to you on uh, what's cooking for Friday. We'll call you later. All right. Uh, later. Thanks for watching the box score FanDuel <laughs> Draft the Show. Uh, you can catch the Danettes make their selections every Thursday right here on Audience or via podcast or at po iTunes or podcast. Uh, podcast one.com. Get, get open. Oh, I. I don't know a lot about sports, but I can drink a lot of beer. My motto is simple, C's get degrees. You need a long, inappropriate hug? I'm your man. I think I'm smarter than you, because I probably am. Hey, thanks for watching the box score. Holy cow!